Hello, everybody. My name is Kelly Dolphy, and I am a data scientist at Red Hat in the Open Source Program Office. Um, myself and my manager, um, Brian Profit, will be doing a presentation on connecting open source and businesses and really looking into how we can start making data driven decisions. And I will pass it off to Brian. And as Kelly said, my name is Brian Profit. Those of you who know me, um, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> so we are both from the Open Source Program Office at Red Hat. And I specifically, um, we are both on the Community Insights team. This is a new team within OSPO um, that is really designed to quantitatively measure the health of communities. But in recent days, um, we've been working on this effort for a while, um, but recently we were trying to expand our efforts and go beyond individual communities and start looking at ecosystems and also the interface between community and business. And that is what we are going to be talking about today. So I'll get us started with the, you know, the, the background information. So how do we discover community health and, and sustainability? Um, this is not a new topic. Some of this you probably have heard um, in past presentations from our office, from the wonderful folks at Project Chaos, which is another Linux Foundation project. Um, so a lot of this work heavily overlaps um, and we'll focus on it today. Historically, if you're not aware, community uh, health was really measured anecdotally. Um, there wasn't really any quantitative analysis, so it was done on such vague and fun terms like how popular is a community or, my, or how many downloads does a community have, what's the user consumption rate, or my favorite, and I still hear this today, how many stars does a GitHub community have? And if you want to see my eye twitch, just roll that past me sometime. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, and by them, like each one of these measurements is not horrible. But if you take them like by themselves and put too much weight on any one of these, it's really not going to give you any kind of indication of pure community health. Um, it's, it, it gives you a level, it, it gives you some idea of what's going on, but not the full picture. So we need to deploy an, analytical rigor. So this is where things like Project Chaos, which I mentioned before, definitely come in. So there's really been three things in the last three or four years that have made this kind of analysis possible. One is the standardization of metrics. And I know I've mentioned them at least twice so far, but this is really what Project Chaos brought to the table. This is a conversation between really brilliant people who basically said, you know, how do we measure communities even though they seem to be different kinds of communities? Because the old argument was, well, my open source community is different from your free software community, which is different from this one over here. There's no way we can all get together and figure out a unified way of measuring things. And the chaos people said, nope. And they actually figured out how to do that. Parallel to that was the evolution of tools that would go with those metrics and, and take those metrics and actually produce um, analytical results. So from Project Chaos, there is um, Augur, uh, uh, there is Cauldron, there's a wealth of tools from the company called Baturgia that they're also using based on Grimoire Labs um, and Elasticsearch and other uh, uh, tools like that. Um, Red Hat contributed one, um, which is a little dormant right now called Prospector um, that we built way back when. Um, so there's a lot of tools in the, in the chaos uh, in environment that are uh, going to be used. And we are taking those and we're doing some other things too. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. I got ahead of myself. And also, <clears throat> the thing that really spurred the concerted effort that we are doing right now in the Community Insights team is this need to have more objective analysis based on business and community needs. And the, sentence, the key part of that sentence is business and community. Before it was just community. But now at Red Hat and other companies, 
um, we are seeing a real need to figure out where communities fit um, on our bottom line. And that's not to say that, oh, we're trying to spend less on communities and cut costs or things like that. But we are trying to figure out how to make them more efficient with what we have. Because I can't speak for all y'all, but at our company, and this is still Red Hat, so we are believers in all this, scale is a problem. You know, we have... 23 people on our team. Yeah, that's it. That's right. Um, roughly. And we have hundreds of projects in our company. And so figuring out how to get the health of all of these projects is really important just from a matter of scale. Um, I've mentioned some of these already. Cauldron is a tool in our toolkit that we use. This is based, uh, this comes from the vendor Baturgia. Um, they, it is a grimoire lab uh, based tool, um, Elastic is running in the back end, and it really does a good job of looking at one community at a time, giving us a graphic feedback of what is going on as far as measurable results. So we're looking at things like, um, like time to first response for a poll request, for instance, and we're looking at demographics of organizations that are involved in a community. Um, and anything that we want to plug in, we basically do that. Um, Augur um, is another tool that is more um, text-based. This is a, a post-SQL-based uh, post uh, tool that dives into multiple GitHub repositories and projects um, and looks at a wealth of information, similar to what Cauldron does, but it does it across multiple projects. And we can get a very big picture very quickly of what's going on in communities. And then something that we do at our own company is we do community report cards. These are basically audit-based forms that we run through. And we use the quantitative analysis. We also do things like, does this project have a website? Does this project's website make sense? And you would think in 2021 that this would always be yes, but you would be wrong. So. <laughs> Um, so we, you know, we do um, non-quantitative analysis as well as part of this. Okay, and with that, I'm done. So <laughs> I will turn it over to my colleague, Callie. Yes. So the tools are one thing, and you can really change. I mean, not everyone needs to use Cauldron or Augur to look at this information, but it's a lot of what you're doing with the data and how you're using it to inform the decisions that you're making. And so we can look at this from the business lens of seeing what businesses actually need. There's a lot of different people who are very new to the open source space. And when you have all of these different communities, all of this different information, how do you go and start to like hone in to try to learn more about the different communities you are trying to get involved in? And some of the questions that come is that trying to see if this community is going to fit with the business model. You can start looking at like seasonality of communities, how the behavior goes over the year span and seeing if that, is that going to work for you? Are those, is that high production or high um, evolution going to match whenever your company needs it? or trying to see if the, company, the, the community is sustainable. And so are you about to depend on something that if two people win the lottery tomorrow, you're kind of like at the end of your road? And so starting to see how many people are actually involved in your community, on the community and seeing how heavily you're going to depend on it versus the size of the development and the size of like the maintainers. And more than anything, I feel like where we're at with looking at data for these communities is trying to see what should you pay attention to. When you have such a big scope, how do you go in and try to find like a single needle to focus in to try to give you some a little bit more informed um, information about these communities? And I feel like one thing that should be noted as well is Whenever you're looking at what businesses need, this also equips, equips the communities to be able to advocate for themselves a little bit better in a language that more like matches the, your audience. You can start to say things with backing yourself up with data. And we all know that's what everyone loves to see the here and now. Obviously, I'm a little bit biased as a data scientist, but it can start to let you go a little bit more on the offense, in my opinion, whenever you're going to these conversations and trying to bring people in. So I'll pass this off as well. So as I said earlier, one, there are two things we're looking at here. We're looking at community impact, and then we're also looking at business impact, impact as well. 
we're looking for the ever elusive return on investment, which is something that really historically communities have not, uh, community managers have not done. Um, they, uh, there's, it depends on where your um, open source lands in your organization, of course. If you're in the marketing department, usually there's a little bit more focus on ROI. Um, but, and, but if you're in the engineering department, as things are in, in Red Hat, um, it's not necessarily the case. So what we're trying to do is take all these tools um, and figure out how we can measure um, quantitatively the, the impact of what we do in a community. So for example, one of the things that we want to figure out is like when we come to events like this, um, or more appropriately, something like SCALE, which is the Southern California Linux Expo, which is an excellent community-oriented event, or All Things Open, which is happening in Raleigh next month. Those are very community-oriented events. Red Hat is not really trying to sell you anything there, okay? We're, you, you come to our booth, we don't really have sales reps there. We might, maybe, but not always. Um, we're there to answer community questions because we are trying to support the upstream. So then the question becomes, how well did we do with that? And one of the things we want to try to do with some of these tools is look at traffic on our projects and conversations that are happening in public forums and say, OK, we really were trying to talk up Kubernetes this time when we did these three events. Did we see an uptick in conversations around Red Hat and Kubernetes there? It's not a sales lead. It's mostly just say, what's our impact statement? Um, that kind of thing. So that gets to the targeted marketing initiatives because we're really div digging in with this new data analysis into new sources that we've never done before. Um, they gave us all a bunch of lead generation apps on our phones for the booth, right? And that, so I can tell you who came by the booth and picked up a hat. Um, that's the old data, right? Now I want to see, well, OK, who was talking about us and what were they saying after they came by the booth? Did we make an impact positively or you know, negatively um, on communities after given events? Um, and all of those resources can be hopefully calibrated towards community health. Um, the community impact, obviously, that was probably the first thing we've always wanted to do. Now we're going to measure risk factors, as Callie pointed out, on different levels. Um, we're still looking at internal project health. Um, and, but now with tools like Augur and uh, other tools that we're starting to build and integrate together, we're going to look at broader ecosystem tools um, so we can figure out what's going on in the general thing. So again, not to pick on it, but Kubernetes is a big ecosystem. Um, it would be nice to focus on individual projects, but it would also be nice to see what the general trend for health in that entire ecosystem is. Um, and early detection of those risk factors can inform community decisions. If you've heard me speak about this in the last three years, you've heard me say this time again. In the past, community managers we are all brilliant people, really, I, I swear <laughs> to God. Um, but we always brought our own skills to the table. It was always done anecdotally. I'm a writer by trade, so guess what? I'm going to focus on documentation. If an engineer comes in and becomes a community manager, they are probably going to focus on um, processes and agile or whatever. You know, They're going to be on the engineering side of the table. That's not bad. It's just what you bring to the table. This sort of levels the playing field. So people who are strong in one area and weak in another might now have tools to make informed community decisions. And now back to the smart person. Yes, yeah, so I want to try to talk a little bit about the, how the data science workflow goes into how we can start making more informed decisions. Um, when we're looking at analyzing communities, it, kind of takes a little bit more of an experimental approach. This is a space that really hasn't been dived too far into. And so you start to have to figure out where your boundaries are and what are the type of questions you want answered. 
And so it always starts out with what is the type of data that you want to examine? Where are the different pain points you want to try to go into and get some quicker, like we're trying to see where, how do you want to access it in a quick way and can help get you some answers. And, trying to, and also trying to look at how should it be analyzed? Um, this is whenever you start trying to go into whether it's on a more simple scale, if you want to try to look at the mean or median, what's going to actually represent the type of data you're looking at. For example, if you're looking at issue data and you just want to look at mean, mean to first response or something like that, some issues never get responded to. So that's not going to give you a really great view into what's happening within your community. You start to have to figure out what layers do you need to look at to be able to give an actual cohesive view and I think this has been something that has been great to be just so deep involved in like OSPO and starting to learn a little bit more about how different open source communities work and getting just to talk to a bunch of different people. Because I've gotten to come in about a year and a half ago being a pretty big novice in the open source field. And so coming in and being able to be like, OK, what are the questions that I have where I know nothing? And starting to figure out from the people around me how would you go about viewing those things from a community manager standpoint or a community member standpoint? And so how can we start to make sure that all of those viewpoints are going in and we can start to make a little bit more informed decisions? And so next, looking more into like strategic investment, like looking ahead. Um, a big thing that going into seeing different softwares like Augur is you can start to see the overall ecosystem. And this can start to be where you can start to look at Overall, what are the different communities that may be having some more buzz around them, things that we should be paying attention to more? If a few years ago we were looking at containers and somebody could have told you, I don't know, six months in advance that that was going to be something that was going to explode, that would be great. And so that's something that you can start to bolster with having different ecosystem-focused data and starting to see, okay, overall, what are people talking about and where are the different things do I want to try to be a little bit more informed? Um, and this can kind of go into as well as community like buzz. What are the different things that they're talking about and trying to see what's going on in maybe the entire ecosystem of ML AI projects? What are other people learning about that you can help make your better decisions about your own ML project? And trying to bolster those type of connections is really something I think is huge here. And so overall, you can start to try to see those emerging topics and trends to see where you want to focus in on the next go around or the different people you want to try to talk to. It's really hard whenever you have such a big space. And I can say that that's kind of something I felt when I first came into open source. It's like, where do I even go? And so I wouldn't say data is always going to have the answer, but it might help you get a little closer to the type of questions you want to look into. You might be able to see something as we'll go into a little bit of a demo where you'll see a spike in the data. That might not tell you why something is happening, but you can start to look into it and start making more informed. You can start to figure it out as a community member. You might be able to remember some big conversation that happened um, on an email thread, and you can actually see how that impacted some community activity. Or you can look at an event like this. If you had some huge talk about your community and a large amount of people came in, you know the type of impacts they're having and things that you would like to do to try to bolster um, your community engagement. Or at different times, if something negative is happening, what you need to do to get ahead on that quickly so it doesn't try to take your community down and you can be one step ahead of it. And so this is where we're going to look into a slight demo on um, some of the data that we have been looking at. This is what I would consider that first step of looking at data. We're kind of looking at commits, all of the normal ones by, month, by monthly basis and different intervals. And so right now you can start to use this to look at different questions you want to answer and then how you want to try to aggregate this data to the next step. Um, I'll kind of go into some examples on different things that this first step has gone to inform things that we want to look at in the future. Um, for example, right here, we're looking at how um, new issue creators for this certain for a community. And um, this is actually we're looking at as a demo is the Augur community, because the Augur community has been a great help in this process for us. And we're actually, that's the tool that we're using to generate all this data um, as a little hype up for them. Great community. Um, and so something you can start to see here is a large jump in the amount of new issue creators by day. You can see that there's something pretty big that's happening in this community around um, December of 2019. 
And whenever you're looking at it overall, you can really start to see that jump in the issue creation. And so whenever you're going that, you're like, okay, is there another metric that's, that is going and confirming this jump in activity? Look at that. You have it with the PRs as well. And so you're starting to see these are new people coming into our community. And this is whenever you can start to have that knowledge that's been there over time with your community managers being like, okay, clearly something has gone to really impact our community. What happened here? How do we go to bolster this to happen again to try to bring more people in? And also starting to look at, are we able to handle this growth? Are the maintainers keeping up with the amount of issues that are being posted? Are they handling the amount of PRs in a way that is timely? Are they responding to people? And so while it's all great whenever new people come in and you have a lot of activity around it, you wanna make sure that you're making this a welcoming place for new contributors because you don't want them to come in, see that nobody's responding to them and leave and, never, and not stay a part of your community. This is whenever you can start to look at how many, not just the amount of people who are coming in, but the amount of issues that are being created overall. And so this is something you can kind of see like, okay, if we're looking at the amount of new issues, is it representative to be, is there still a large jump of the amount of issues or just people who are new? And so you can start to see whether on how many issues are jumping up. And if you're seeing, I think the by month is kind of the best way of looking at it here in comparison with the um, data that we were looking at before. And so here we can see a huge month with the amount of issues that are opened. And so is it staying that way with the amount of issues that are closed? Are we keeping up with it? And so here we can kind of see that for the most part, it seems like it's a pretty good ratio. But this is when you want to actually look over your backlog in time. And you can look at the pull request data in the same way. And so right here, this is about the time period where that activity happened. And so you can start to see that, yes, our community is actually able to keep up with the amount of people who are coming in and asking questions. And so whenever you start to see some large jump ups in your backlog, you can start to see if you need to bring more maintainers, is, is it sustainable, the amount of growth that you're having? Um, and this is whenever you can kind of go into the next step of if there is something going wrong or you're starting to see that backlog, how quickly are people getting responded to? And so if we're looking at issues, for example, how many people are getting an answer at all? And so you can start to see the percentage of people who are getting an answer or not in their, um, in their issues, and then looking at how long it's taking to get any type of response. Whether this is a good or bad number is gonna be informed by the community itself. And so this is where I go really back to my point with the data is that it helps you focus in on something, but it's not gonna always have the answers. And so this is why I really think it's great to equip the community managers with this because somebody who is deeply involved in this community is going to be able to look at this data and know a lot more about the community than somebody who's on the outside looking in. And so I think it's great to be able to see this and start to go into the, like the next stage of looking at the seasonality of communities. That's something I'm really excited about, um, being able to take this data and start to look at trends over the week and looking at trends over the years of seeing how your community's activity goes up or down. And so whenever you do see a large spike, is that something that season and from a seasonality standpoint happens every year or is this a spike or dip that's happening that is new and you just start looking a little bit more into your community and what's going on. And so that's what we got for today. Thank you all so much. And yeah, we'll take any questions if we have time. Yeah. <laughs> And over here. Um, uh, the, the slide you're starting to get into the intenter side, mm -hmm. uh, like the seasonality of the first set of intenters you're kind of looking at to see, like, okay, if I see this in the data, this, this change, I should expect X. So, repeating the question for online, um, if we see, our, if we see inferences, is that the first level of iteration that we're looking yeah, for? I would say it more you can see instead of just looking at a single month or a single year 
depending on the range that you're looking at, you can see the trends over time with your community. And so I wouldn't say it's a like predictive portion. It's more that, okay, if I see a large jump in May of 2021, um, is that a jump that is seen, seen every year? Or is it there a huge dip? It's more that you can start using it to like read and look and start to aggregate some of the data together. And I feel like that's kind of what the ne another next stages are is how, what do we need to group together to be able to get from a question to an answer as quickly as possible. Uh, um, so the question was, what are the differences in data points between a more mature, well-rounded code base versus something that's more immature, correct? Um, so the flippant answer would be nothing. Um, because here, like the, a, a mature code base and a mature code community is still might have the same kinds of troubles and strife as an immature community. I mean, so there is a part of Project Chaos that does look into the evolution of a project, and, and that's the, the growth, maturity, and decline model. So where a community is on that curve certainly matters. Um, if you're speaking strictly to code base, though, no, it doesn't. I mean, it's like if it's Mozilla Firefox, they could be blowing up. Um, right now versus a small, you know, three person startup project. Um, but if I if I flip that question a little bit, evolution matters. So governance is a thing. When you're talking about like uh, a benevolent dictator for life for a project, which is a, certainly an early governance model. If you're doing that like in the first two years, totally makes sense. That's not a problem. If that project is 10 years old and it's still like that and there's no real governance and you've got a lot of political infighting and things going on, now you've got a problem. 